Hey guys, this is Luke from the Scoundrels Cantina, and welcome to another video. In this video, we'll be going over how powerful Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi is, which will include going over his lightsaber skills, force powers, and other abilities. As always, we're mixing the expanded universe and canon, because we believe that there is no reason why most of it can't fit together. Todd the other scoundrel will be having the honors in narrating this video, so anyway, let's begin. Hello there! Well first off, we're going to be starting off with his lightsaber skills and abilities. Obi-Wan Kenobi was one of the greatest lightsaber duelists in galactic history, being a natural swordsman whose ability was evident even at a young age. During his training under Qui-Gon Jinn, he specialized in the Taru form of lightsaber combat, which was an aggressive fast-paced style effective against a single opponent, though weaker in prolonged combat. This form helped him compensate for his inexperience at the time, to which he also incorporated acrobatics. Obi-Wan also studied Sheehan, which was evident by his accurate blaster deflections, as well as Nemon, which helped him incorporate Force abilities into his fighting form. Kenobi also displayed an interest in learning Vapad, specifically Mace Windu's variant, which would bring him very close to the dark side of the Force, which was why Qui-Gon refused to let him learn it. In 32 BBY, after Qui-Gon Jinn's death at the hands of Darth Maul and Naboo due to Ataru's lack of defensive capabilities, Obi-Wan abandoned Form 4 of lightsaber combat as his primary style and began studying the defensive form known as Suresu. This did not at all mean that he didn't master Ataru to the fullest. Eventually Suresu became his primary fighting form, although he implemented Ataru's swordplay from time to time. Obi-Wan would study the defensive form from 32 BBY all the way up to 22 BBY when the Clone Wars started, at which point he was exceptional with the form. His tight defense and efficient moves allowed him to stand against the masterful Mandalorian bounty hunter and genetic template of the clone army Jango Fett, as well as survive the Battle of Geonosis while being completely outnumbered by a massive droid army in the Petronaki Arena. When he dueled against Count Dooku, Suresu proved to be extremely ineffective against the elegant Mikashi style strokes and jabs, which was how the Count overwhelmed him with his superior lightsaber prowess. Master Kenobi, you disappoint me. Obi-Wan was very capable of defending himself against Force Lightning with his lightsaber from Dooku, although not for more proficient Force Lightning users such as the Son on Mortis, who was unbelievably powerful. During the Clone Wars, Obi-Wan's blaster deflection skills were honed to the point that it was said that he could walk on Scratch through swarms of blaster fire by single-handedly deflecting it from all directions. Obi-Wan was also capable of dual-wielding lightsabers, which was called Jarkai, which he most notably displayed when dueling Darth Maul and Savage Press on the planet Florum. Against all odds, his mastery in lightsaber combat proved to be the Zabrak brothers' undoing as he held off both of the Sith as well as in the end cut off Savage Press's arm off before the Sith started to retreat. By the end of the Clone Wars, Kenobi's study in Suresu resulted in absolute mastery and he was not only considered a master of Suresu, but THE master of Suresu, meaning that he was one of the greatest combatants of the defensive form in galactic history. Absolutely no one was his equal when it came to deflecting blaster bolts as well as defending himself against multiple lightsabers at the same time. Kenobi also expressed skill in deflecting blaster bolts with two lightsabers as seen on the planet Teth when he was fighting off one of the most dangerous bounty hunters in the galaxy which was none other than Cat Bane himself. During the many encounters Obi-Wan had with General Grievous, over the course of the Clone Wars, he was almost never the one to retreat from the fight. Grievous was a very skilled lightsaber combatant, and even with his extreme speed, Jedi-killing experience, and four lightsabers, he was never capable of overpowering Kenobi's powerful defenses and grew frustrated with him over the years, as the Jedi General was unbeatable. Grievous really wanted his lightsabers for his collection, but that wasn't going to happen. The only time Obi-Wan completely lost focus was when he was facing Darth Maul and his brother Savage with the help of Asajj Ventress when Maul reminded him of what he did to his master years ago on Naboo. After foiling the plot to kidnap the Supreme Chancellor on Naboo, the Sith Lord Count Dooku even praised Kenobi as being a worthy adversary due to the extraordinary lengths he went through to stop his plans. Well done, Master Kenobi. You are a worthy adversary. In 19 BBY, in his final duel against General Grievous on Utapau, Obi-Wan provided one of the purest forms of Suresu as his blade work moved just fast enough to block or evade every single attack by Grievous with his four lightsabers. His mastery allowed him to comfortably counter 18 of Grievous' strikes per second with just a single blade. Without ever losing his focus in the duel, he cut off Grievous' arms off one by one until the General once again started to retreat. 
When Obi-Wan dueled against his fallen apprentice, Anakin Skywalker, aka Darth Vader, he proved to be the only one to ever survive a confrontation against the Sith Lord while even winning at the same time. He not only survived it, but his defense perfectly countered Vader's angry Form 5 of lightsaber combat as he wore his opponent out, waiting for an opening to finally strike. Not to mention that he knew his fallen friend better than anyone. After the Clone Wars, when he went into exile on Tatooine, his skills would greatly atrophy over the years as he used his lightsaber as rarely as possible over the course of his 19 years in exile. In 17 BBY, while in exile, he came across and fought against the Jedi Purge survivor called Ashar at Heth, who became a Tusken Raider warlord that threatened the safety of the Lars homestead. In his deal with Heth, he would defeat him by using Cho Mok, which was a technique of cutting off an opponent's limb, which in this case was Ashar's arm. Kenobi also had dealings with bounty hunters and even Imperial Inquisitors who were sent to hunt down all remaining Jedi throughout the galaxy. In 2 BBY, he would come face to face against his old wound, his old enemy, Maul. During this short encounter, Kenobi lured Darth Maul and using the same move on him as he did on his master exactly 30 years ago as he switched from a Suresu stance to an Ataru one. When Maul attacked, Obi-Wan was ready to counter the move he knew his opponent would use on him and brought an end to his old enemy swiftly. In Zero BBY, when Obi-Wan dueled on the Death Star against Darth Vader for the final time, the Dark Lord of the Sith acknowledged his skills enough that he cautiously assaulted him instead of aggressively and arrogantly attacking him like the last time they met on Mustafar 19 years prior. Due to his old age and his deteriorated lightsaber skills, Obi-Wan recognized that he would eventually be defeated so he knew that it was time to finally become one with the Force. He put up quite a fight but in the end had the last laugh as he vanished before Vader's lightsaber blade. All in all, Jedi Master and Jedi High General Obi-Wan Kenobi was one of the greatest lightsaber duelists in galactic history as well as THE Master of Suresu. Now we're going to go over his Force powers. As a Jedi Guardian, Kenobi mostly focused on lightsaber combat, although also proved to be very powerful with the Force, so much so that at one point Anakin compared his power to that of Jedi Master Mace Windu, who is considered as one of the most powerful Jedi of the era. One of Kenobi's most used force powers was the mind trick as he liked to resolve matters without conflict which earned him the name the negotiator. It was an ability he used regularly which took him years to perfect and so he did. Kenobi was known for using very powerful force pushes during the Clone Wars with which he would blast away his enemies to oblivion. Sometimes he was known to focus his power before unleashing a burst of pressurized air into an explosive force of devastating effect to his opponents which was known as force burst. Kenobi regularly used Force Pull, with which he would pull his lightsaber if he was to be disarmed, as well as bring his enemies to him and cut him down. Obi-Wan could also use Force Repulse to a devastating effect, which was most notably seen when it was swallowed by the massive Jedi bounty hunter Dirge and blew him apart from the inside. Kenobi was also skilled in using Force Deflection, which was an ability with which one could deflect blaster bolts with Force as well as any sorts of projectiles. Kenobi was seen doing this while battling Dirge on the planet Munalist. Obi-Wan was capable of using the Force to enhance his speed, during which time seemed to have been slowed down to him as if he was a speedster. This ability also enhanced his other abilities as he was capable of doing everything faster which ties into him deflecting countless blaster bolts with immense speed. He was also known for using Force Jump very often which was basically the Force enhancing the ability to leap a large distance. Force Leap played a big role in the advancement of his lightsaber skills as he often used acrobatics while dueling against an opponent. One of his more aggressive Force abilities was Force Crush with which he could lift his opponents into the air and crush them with the Force, although as a Jedi he only used it on droids as it was considered too violent against living beings. He was skilled enough in the Force to use Tuta Menace which was an ability capable of dissipating concentrated energy such as a blaster bolt, a lightsaber and even Force Lightning if the user was powerful enough. It was one of the most useful and powerful abilities as it could be used to either deflect or absorb any type of energy based weapon. Bounty hunters that hunt the Jedi usually use flamethrowers as it was the most difficult for the Jedi to deflect so when Obi-Wan used Tutu Menace to deflect fire unleashed at him from Dirge it really showed how powerful of a Jedi he really is. Obi-Wan Kenobi had a certain gift when it came to animals as he was excellent with the ability known as either beast control or animal bonding. On many occasions, Kenobi would bond with the animal while communicating with it through the Force, after which it became a mount or a guard beast. If it was a more aggressive animal, he could only control it for a certain period of time, all the while focusing his power as was seen on Ryloth while trying to save the clone troopers who were under his command. By using the Force, Old Ben Kenobi was capable of mimicking the sounds of a crate dragon as he did when he scared off the Sand People in order to save Luke Skywalker from them. 
So as you can see, Kenobi was a master of the Force, even though he preferred the use of his lightsaber, with which he was mostly unmatched. Also, we mustn't forget that when he became one with the Force, he became more powerful than we could possibly imagine to an extent that is unknown to us, apart from being eternal and existing in a plane outside of time itself. It is the definition of being one with the Force, and that is what Obi-Wan Kenobi eventually became. Now we're going to go over his other skills and abilities. Obi-Wan Kenobi was an exceptional military strategist as well as famous for countless Republic victories which eventually resulted in him becoming a Jedi High General. He had a highly persuasive demeanor which earned him the moniker of the Negotiator. Ah yes, the Negotiator, General Kenobi, we've been waiting for you. Jimmy. His tactical skills allowed him to minimize clone trooper casualties throughout countless battles during the Clone Wars. Obi-Wan was capable of receiving quite a bit of punishment which alongside his mastery in Suresu allowed him to exhaust most of his enemies which was all part of his strategy as seen when dueling Darth Vader on Mustafar. Kenobi was extremely skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat which he incorporated into his lightsaber fighting style such as when outclassing Pre Vizsla during their brief duel on the moon of Concordia. He also showed superior fighting skills when he was undercover as the bounty hunter Reiko Hardeen, especially since he was able to defeat Anakin without a lightsaber as Skywalker not knowing it was Kenobi was trying to kill him as revenge for his master's supposed death. Now that's how good of a fighter he was. Kenobi was able to take a lot of punishment when captured and tortured and had an extremely high pain threshold especially seen while captured by Darth Maul. No one could take what Obi-Wan could and simply at once get back on his two feet and fight when the time was right. Despite his dislike of flying in a starfighter, Kenobi was an excellent pilot, so much so as even being one of the best in the entire Jedi Order. Blast, this why I hate flying. As a Padawan, he had great interest in the starfighter program, but would later because of a terrifying experience with the autopilot of a starfighter that he piloted start disliking flying, even though he led many attacks on his Jedi starfighter and Jedi interceptor years after the incident. Alright R4, no 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 no, no nothing too fancy. Kenobi also had considerable skill in repairing all kinds of machines and computers, most notably fixing Queen Amidala's Royal Naboo Starship's hyperdrive. Unlike most Jedi, Obi-Wan was an excellent marksman who almost never missed a shot as he demonstrated when completing the box challenge while posing as Reiko Hardeen in front of other notorious bounty hunters and Count Dooku himself. So uncivilized. Obi-Wan Kenobi was also the master of trolling which would completely throw his enemies off guard before a fight erupted as their psyche would be forever damaged by his trolling prowess. That's just it, how can I become a Jedi master if I'm always getting caught? At least you're a master at getting caught. Now at the end we have the most powerful ability in all of Star Wars which was of course the high ground. It is said to have been able to defeat anyone if an individual was even capable of having it. If it was available to him before any lightsaber duel, he would conjure it before completely annihilating his enemy. It's over, Anakin! I have the high ground! Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi was most likely one of the only known users of the high ground, granting him to be the most powerful being in the entire galaxy. Hello there. General Kenobi! Anyway guys, this is it on the video and we hope you all enjoyed it and learned something new about the vast galaxy of Star Wars. If you enjoy our content, make sure to check out our second lore channel The Crossroads Inn and if you want to watch more videos like this one, the links to the playlist for our other Star Wars stories and videos will be in the description down below. Also, if you want to support this channel, hit that subscribe button for more videos like this one and remember guys, God is awesome, may the force be with you always and we'll see you in another video, you rebel scum. This party's over.